Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. You are watching YouTube News. Here's some f***ing news. So today we have three main headlines. Jake Paul copyright claims Anison Gibbs fight trailer. Jake Paul and Tana Mojo have officially split? Mm. And will the PS5 be fully backwards compatible, meaning that you'll be able to play games from all the previous four generations? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to YouTube News. Let's get into this. Our first headline is that Jake Paul has copyright claimed Annie St. Gibbs' new fight trailer. Now, it all started on the 29th of December when Annie St. Gibbs put out a fight trailer. And I don't know what was on the fight trailer, apart from what Annie St. Gibbs has tweeted out. But he put out a tweet on the 4th of January, which had a error message come up to say that this video is no longer available due to copyright claims by Jake Paul. It actually says by Jake Paul, as you can see in the screenshot. So Annie St. Gibb captions this tweet with, The hairline stuff must have really hurt your feelings for you to strike it, lol. The fight trailer that I promoted has various clips from my documentary. You are being outdone, Jakey, and you can't hack it. Rota Shaw then put out a tweet. Jake Paul copystrike Gibbs' video because he made fun of his hairline. You can't make this up. So Jake Paul then retweets Harry's tweet with a caption. Hey Gibb, your boyfriend here is upset. Maybe an over-the-pants handjob with Carmen down. Fuck out of here, stealing my content. So Anison Gibb hasn't replied so far, but I'm very surprised that on the actual video it says copyright claimed by Jake Paul. They don't normally do that. Or at least I don't think they do. But anyway, moving on to the second headline, which is Jake Paul and Tana Mojo have split. They weren't even in a relationship anyway. But okay, they've split. Okay, time to start being non-biased again and be an actual news reporter. So, Jake Paul meets up with Alyssa Violet, makes a video on Alyssa Violet, makes a song about Alyssa Violet, and then posts a picture on Instagram. Tana Mojo has no idea about any of this until she sees the picture and then the picture talking about promo in the song and then puts up a picture to say that she's taking a break from social media. I think that's pretty much it. She then makes a video which is called My Everyday Makeup Routine Since Getting Married and um, basically slates Jake without slating him. Essentially saying that he cheated on her without saying that he cheated on her. I mean, can we just say this is a publicity stunt, okay? This is a publicity stunt. They just both want clout. That's it, okay? There's no... I would be surprised if there's even a relationship at this point, okay? They're not married. Um, and yeah, I, I doubt that they're even in a relationship. Banks has obviously cheated on Alyssa Violet, so that is no longer a thing. So she says things like, Six months ago, I was sat in this exact spot crying over someone that cheated on me. And I might be doing that in two weeks' time. She also goes on to say things like, Well, since being married, I didn't really have to make an effort because I've just been a housewife. And then, finally, she went on to say that um, her, her makeup routine could do more than any of her words can. Like, she can explain things more with her makeup than she can um, with her words. And then she, um, oh dear, she makes herself a clown. She's basically saying that this whole thing has made her look like a fucking idiot. Now, personally, okay, right? I'm not, I'm not gonna speak on Jake. Personally, I think Tana Mojo is fairly funny, actually. Um, watching this video, like, there's been parts where I've actually laughed. Um, I feel like she can be quite funny. So she's talking about like media and how normally she speaks out and she goes, um, and she goes, you know, most people have like hobbies, you know, like knitting or, you know, anything. Mine's not really making myself look dumb. You know, I'm just not really into that. So like, she does have like a sarcastic, like funny side in her videos. Just, um, yeah. This whole clout thing, clout chasing, has kind of ruined that a little bit. But anyway, this is all just, as I say, a publicity stunt. They just want clout. They just want numbers. And fair play to them, because, like, their fans are so young, so believe, like, they will believe anything, so naive, that, um, yeah, you can get away with this. So fair play to them. Like, 
screw it. Finally, the third headline for today's episode of YouTube News. Will the PS5 be fully compatible? This could be interesting. So can we just talk, like right now, PS4 doesn't even do PS3. So there is no backwards compatibility on PlayStation at this point. So right now, the only way of beating Microsoft is to go the full Monty. So obviously on the Xbox One, you can play Xbox 360 titles. And at the moment, you can't play any backward, like any previous generation of game on the PlayStation 4. However, fully backwards compatibility. For those of you that don't know what that means, it means that on the PS5, you'll be able to play PS1 games, PS2 games, PS3 games, and PS4 games, as well as obviously your PS5 games. So first of all, I found these rumors on a Twitter page called Hip Hop Gamer, and then I found some more uh, rumors. A PlayStation leaker previously suggested that the new machine could support titles from Sony's past home platforms, and the same leaker claimed that Sony will launch the PS5 in North America on the 20th of November, and it will be priced at $499, um, or $499. Mark Cerny, who was the lead architect on the PlayStation 4 and PlayStation Vita, confirmed that PS5 would support from its predecessor. So this is a man that has worked on the PS4 and on the PS Vita. Which means, like, this is the man that's worked with that company. He knows plans. PlayStation CEO and President Jim Ryan has also said that the company's main aim is to take that community and transition it from PS4 to PS5 and at a scale and pace that we've never delivered on before. Wow, this could be interesting. If you can play the old Spyro games on PS5, that will be crazy. Like, that will be mental. But there's one problem. Will there be any point in remasters now? You've had, obviously you've had your remaster of Crash, you've had your remaster of Spyro, you've had your remaster of Crash Team Racing. Like, will there be any point in more um, on any any more remasters? The reason I say this is because if the PS5 will run older titles, will that be with 4K support? If it is, then you don't need it. You don't you don't need a remaster. I understand that they inc increase and improve other aspects, but like, do you really need it? Could the PlayStation 5 be a bigger console than the Xbox? Who knows? Who knows? I mean, the PlayStation have already got better exclusives games, like um, The Last of Us, like Uncharted. There's plenty of games that are PlayStation exclusive, which are, you know, better than what the Xbox can offer. So there we are, those are the three main headlines for today. If you have any opinions, then let me know in the comments. I will be responding to everybody. But for now, from everybody and myself at YouTube News, we hope you have a lovely rest of your evening. Good night. It's some f***ing news.